Hey home bakers, it's Jack here, Bake with Jack UK, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And this week, how do you get stuff into your dough? You know, like bits and bobs. Roll it. Hey you guys and welcome back to the Bake with Jack YouTube channel where I share with you a little tip to help you make amazing bread at home. If that's your cup of tea, is that's the sort of thing that you like and you haven't pressed that subscribe button yet, have a think about pressing that subscribe button to see me here every week and let's get on with it. This week I'm going to show you how to get fillings inside of your bread dough. I'm talking about dried fruit, nuts, seeds, olives, stuff like that. This is how I do it in a standard yeasted dough of around 65 to 70 percent hydration. Cut to the table. Okay so here's my dough just after kneading. I've got a little dusty box of flour just in case I need it. Bake with Jack Scraper to help me out and here is my filling. I'm going to do a walnut and raisin loaf actually which is quite a standard one. It's one I've been doing at Bake with Jack since the very very beginning about five and a half years ago now. So this is 150 grams uh, which I have soaked with uh, water. So with this dough, this being, being the top, I've just kneaded it. I'm going to give it a little dust on the top, flip it over because that will help us out so it doesn't stick to the table. Now I'm going to push it out like this with my fingers. Just push it out and spread it nice and big as far as it will allow me to go. That's all. Half of this I'm going to put in now. Okay, so half of that goes in like that. Like this. Now I'm going to push it down press it in with my fingers. It's wet because it was soaked so it's going to be a little bit slippery and that's okay for a bit. Okay so I'm just push it in my fingers just make sure we don't lose too many off the edge and make sure it doesn't stick too much to the table as I'm pushing it down into the table. Push that like that. Now I'm going to take this and fold that down like that put it inside. Take that fold it up like that put it inside. Now I'm going to turn it like this and now with the other half I'm going to do the other half exactly the same way. So push all this now, I can feel it inside, it's in like a little pocket right? But it's not yet throughout our dough still. Other half on the top. Like that. Same deal, I'm going to spread this out like this. Dimple it in with my fingers to get them all in there and then Any bits that I lose, I'm just going to scrape up with a scraper like this and put them back on the top where they belong. Lovely. And then I fold it up exactly the same as earlier. That bit down. Oh, bit sticky underneath. And that bit over the top like this. Okay, now it's in there. Like I said before, I can feel it in there in a pocket. It's not gone yet throughout the dough. And it's quite important just to give it a couple of minutes work. Just kneading it like this for a couple of minutes. You might be able to hear it squelching in there. And after a while, what might happen is it might just bust out of the side somewhere, okay? And this is normal. It's normal for it to have a little tear here and then all the filling come out and make a big mess and then you'll start getting sticky and that's okay. Don't worry about it too much. We just want to go enough so that we feel like it's evenly dispersed throughout the dough. And the reason we don't do this before, by the way, those raisins, if we put them in right at the beginning of the kneading and then kneaded the dough for eight to ten minutes like normal, all those raisins, we would just lose them. They would just turn into mush and work their way through the dough and we'd lose the actual raisins themselves. It would just be like a brown, sticky, sweet dough without the raisins. So a few minutes work. As you can see, stuff's popping out, but don't worry about it. Just expect it. Just put it back. Keep working, getting sticky, that's lovely, not a problem at all. Keep working until you feel like it's evenly dispersed. I still feel like we're getting there now, I feel like we're getting there. There's lots in there, there's lots on the outside, but there's lots inside as well. Remember to use your scraper every once in a while. Have a little scraper, exactly like you normally would do when you need it. Just ignore that extra stickiness. Okay, we're getting there now, look. Yeah, wonderful. Now I feel like that's pretty even now. I can see bits here, I can see bits there. I can see bits all over the place. So now, we just shape it into the ball as normal. 
and get it back into the bowl where it belongs. A little bit of dust, flip it, turn it into that ball. Back into the bowl. Rest up nicely. That's the technique I use to get stuff into my dough. Uh, in general. Feel free to have a play with the quantities if you want it more densely packed with filling. Just remember the more that you put in the heavier you're making everything and the slower things are going to take to rise up. It's a little bit of weight on everything else inside the dough. But listen I hope this video has helped you out to get stuff into your dough and more importantly to get them evenly throughout the dough. So when you slice your bread at the end every slice has got a little piece of summer in it. You don't get like half and a loaf is completely empty and everything bundled down the other end. Uh, make sure you knead it through until just until you're happy that it's evenly dispersed. Thank you very much for being here with me every single week. Please click that thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed already click subscribe and I look forward to seeing you here next week for another bread making tip. Bye bye.